Hey guys, uh, so you remember this laptop screen from one of my other projects where I showed how to connect this driver board pick up off of eBay uh, so you can reuse this screen with other things. We've got uh, with the DVI, HDMI, VGA, and then it's got like a sound port and the power cord. Uh, I haven't done anything else with this screen yet, so I decided to go ahead and make a mounting bracket for it, or a uh, frame, so I can reuse it without worrying about shorting stuff out on the board. Um, having it accidentally touch, you know, like the metal frame or whatever. So I've got this uh, scrap board. What I'm thinking is that I can take and uh, cut a groove in here. The screen is about a quarter inch deep. So if I cut a groove in this board and set the screen in the groove, then I can mount this uh, driver board behind it. Um, and I have some masonite board that I can put a, a backing cover on this as well. So at that point, I would just need to figure out some way to either make a stand for it or a mount or something. I'll figure that out. But that way I'll be able to use this screen without uh, worrying about ruining it and giving it a little more protection. So the next step I'm guessing, or I'm thinking, is uh, cut this board to length, cut the grooves in it, kind of do a rough layout, see how everything fits, and then mount these boards on the back. So this will basically sit like so, and then this board will mount, probably pointing down like that, maybe pointing to the side, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll figure that out. Um, and then the on-off switch. I'll probably mount facing out so I can just reach behind and turn it on. That way it'll keep the front clean. I also had, I, I was debating, uh, I have this capacitive touch, um, so I could make it a touch screen. And then basically I could connect this to uh, like an Arduino or the Raspberry Pi itself and interpret the touch, the X, Y position. The only problem with that, I may have to, I'll have to track down a new one if I want to do that because this screen, while it fits here, we're a little bit short. So I don't know, that may be another project I haven't quite decided yet because this screen as a, as a touch screen would be really useful. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I. I We'll have to see if I can uh, track down one that's the right size. So. I think that these will work now. Take a look here. That lines up just right. I may have to do a little touch up with the sander. And then this one here lines up just right with that. So, uh, next step is to take and cut a groove a quarter inch wide in these and then see if we can fit this uh, screen in there. Alrighty guys, see how this works. Uh, got a bottom and a side here. Take this screen, I took the uh, mounting brackets off it. I may have to do a little bit of trimming, we'll see here. Alright. Now that the control board is off. Years. This groove is not deep enough. 
and this groove is not deep enough. So I'm going to take these back out on the saw and cut them again. All right, trim those up now. We'll see how they fit. Hmm, that's odd. Seems like it's too deep on this side and not deep enough on this side, maybe. So, the frame on this side is wider than the frame on this side. I'll set that blade a little bit deeper and uh, do a couple more passes on this one. All right, so I've been uh, debating how to attach this uh, board to the back of this. I've got this masonite here that I will be cutting a groove in this frame to mount in. And I wanna mount this board to the back of this. So I've got it marked here. And uh, I was looking for a way to mount this. There's four mounting holes here. I was looking for a way to mount this to the back of this. That would be uh, good. All right, so this is gonna sit flipped over here. I think I want this to be right about here. That translates to right about the center of this board. If I flip it over right about here, I need to drill out some holes here. want to do it directly over this. I'm going to overhang it here. Alright. Kind of eyeballing it here. I think what I'll do is drop this screw through, keep it lined up while I drill the next one. Drop another screw in. Actually, just use these rods. Alrighty guys, um, unfortunately my memory card ran out of space when I was recording the last bit of my video here. I didn't think to check it, um, but this is the frame. I've got it finished. Uh, as you can see here, I've got the control board mounted to the masonite here. I've got two screws holding it in. Um, inside here, I put some double-sided tape in between the control board and the back of the screen just to give it a little space so it doesn't uh, short out or anything. I cut another groove in the uh, in the sides of the frame, and then I also cut a, a groove in here for the for the switches, the control switches. Uh, routed all the wiring around, taped them down, glued them down, um, put some screws in. You can see the bottoms of the screws here. I marked and drilled, and then put the control board through and screwed it in, so I can turn it on just by tapping the button here on the back. Um, and then I put all the pieces in and, and applied glue to the frame to hold it all together. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap here, um, mainly because I was using hot melt glue and it hardened up before I got it pushed all the way together. So it turned out looking pretty good. Uh, all you have to do to uh, plug it in, I mean, all you have to do is plug it in. I've got the HDMI here and the power cable here um, so I'll go ahead and plug that in and uh, get a shot of it with it working on the Raspberry Pi. I also had some screws in here um, but I took those out because it was putting too much pressure on the screen so 
So here it is plugged in. I've got it plugged in my Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm using this for uh, basically running tests with the uh, with FOMO and the other videos that I'm doing on here. So uh, yeah, it works great. Um, I have the power cord plugged in uh, and the HDMI cable plugged in. I'm just turning it on here. So there you have it.